Bushnell. Performance is the only thing. Federal premium ammunition, surgical precision, terminal results. Savage Arms, better come standard. Gold tip, start tough, stay true. And these other fine sponsors. Hi folks, welcome to this week's episode of Bushnell's Trigger Effect. We're going to be mixing it up a little bit and doing something different. We're going to be doing a blasting cast here in South Texas, which is a little bit of hunting and a little bit of fishing. That's right. We're going to be joining Arnold again with South Texas Elite Hog Hunters. We're going to be targeting Javelina and with mixing that up, Arnold has arranged for us to go out in the Gulf of Mexico with his good friend, John Barretta, who's a uh, fishing boat captain and has his own charter, going to do some saltwater fishing. So you're not going to want to miss this action. Let's head out. Go get some stink pigs and let's catch some fish. We're heading out onto the Gulf of Mexico to do some fishing. And uh, I know Kent and I are both very excited about this. here with Captain John. He's uh, been gracious enough to take us out after some fish. What are we going to be doing today? Well right now we're going to fish for some speckled trout and we're working this flat out here. It's a lot of grass beds and these trout are just finished spawning with the full moon that we just had last week and so we're throwing live croaker trying to get on these big spawning trout. Okay. And hopefully we'll uh, be able to get on a couple oversized trout and work from there. All right, sounds good. I got to grab a rod and get in the water. Thanks, John. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Water's warm. Temperature's awesome. Nice break from hunting. Nice break from hunting. There's no mosquitoes. And that walking stock. Yeah. I don't want to whack the camera. <laughs> Try not knocking me out, okay? There we go. Got him. Jeez. Where do I film? Where do I film? That's the keeper. You got a good her? Oh yeah, look at that thing. I'm gonna switch over here. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Man, look at that thing. Our average speckled trout will be roughly around 14 to 17 inch range, but they will grow up to be these beautiful creatures that you have here. Minimum size length is 15 inches and we are 16. So this one is going in the going in the ice chest. Going in the live well. I don't like that. That's my first trout. Cool. You got yourself the first hardhead catfish of the day. A catfish? You can eat that one, Neat. Yeah. I'll, I'll eat the trout. The, the way you said that quick, I don't think I'm going to be eating it. <laughs> it's your first shark. I don't know what it is. Now, these aren't, aren't like your typical uh, freshwater 
flatheads or channel cats, they are they they are a little poisonous on their fins. Got their pectoral fins and their dorsal fin have a spine in them. Yeah. So you're not going to handle him at all. No. Nope. I've been poked way too many times. <laughs> smallest trope. I'm not kidding you. Did you catch bait? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Look at that. There's my... <laughs> Stay tuned for more hunting action with Bushnell's Trigger Effect after this commercial break. Closed captioning is brought to you by Hunting Consultants Plus. More than just a booking agency. Now let's return to the action with Bushnell's Trigger Effect. in the boat. There's a beauty. Wow. Huge. That's a beautiful fish. Same thing, she's fanning the nest. Wow. Now she's going to the dinner plate. I'm kind of excited to try eating these things. I'm, also, I'm good at eating them. I'm just not catching them. John, you're right. What's that? You're, you're beating Dean already? <laughs> I think this is a releaser. This is a good one. He come out of the water. Yeah, he's shaking on the surface. Take your time. Oh, but he's a huge one. This is a great way to change up pig hunt. Go shoot your pigs early, come out, do some saltwater fishing here. Man, it's awesome. Well, John, what are we going to do now? Well, we're done with trout, which I was glad to do. And uh, <laughs> it's a nice, calm, beautiful day. We're yeah. going to try and get out to the jetties and do some nearshore trolling for some kingfish. I'm going to troll some big Rapala lures, some divers. Try and get on some big monster kingfish. Sounds like fun. Let's get at her. You got it. <laughs> the Canadian Wild Turkey Federation is proud to present Turkey Talk. Hi, I'm Colby. I joined the Canadian Wild Turkey Federation because I like to hunt and fish. The CWTF helps provide lots of opportunities for kids to get involved with hunting and the outdoors. Right now I'm rigging up a wire leader. These kingfish have some very sharp teeth. And so you can't do conventional mono leaders. You gotta use a, a pretty strong tensile strength piano wire. So what I'm using is a uh, 80 pound test hard wire. When they hit, they usually smack it first, then they'll come back and do a second hit. They usually get hooked on right away. And uh, if there's not too much traffic, which today is pretty, pretty busy out here, we'll uh, we'll run them about 50 to 40 yards apart. Start, 
Now there ain't no reeling happening, but give me a chance to bring this one in. Let's go down, Dino. Woo! These things got some power to them. Let me know how the lion's doing. You running out? Uh, no, not. Well. Yeah. Woo! Alright, I'm gonna start turning the boat towards towards it and you're gonna start getting slack lines so you're gonna have to go really fast. Okay. This one I had a hit. How's it feel, bud? <laughs> Good. Bushnell's trigger effect will return shortly after this commercial break. This segment is brought to you by West Side Stores, your outdoor sports authority. Now, back to Bushnell's Trigger Effect. <laughs> More than a halibut? Yeah, it's a different fight than a halibut. <laughs> there it is. Oh, what it is. Big yeah. Jack. Yeah. Whoa. That is crazy. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> awesome job, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. John, thank you so much for a great day out on the water no here. No problem. Hope you all had a blast. Oh, we sure did. Hope you guys enjoyed the footage of all those speckled trout and the giant Jack Revelle we had. You bet. I mean, Dean had a heck of a time bringing that thing in. Those are fighters. Yeah, they're definitely tough to work with. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you so much. No problem. It was a great day. Thank you, Arnold, for bringing us out here, too. Always, John's the best. You Lord, bet. Man. Thanks, Arnold. Appreciate <laughs> you putting me with these guys. They're a great bunch of guys. And I'd like to get y'all back another time. We definitely will be back for sure. Great on. Thank you. Lethbridge College proudly presents Conservation Connection. Hi folks, welcome to this week's edition of Conservation Connection at Lethbridge College. Joining me is Ron Hammerstead, who's one of the instructors here. One of the things that we've been noticing more and more is people using the term cumulative effects or cumulative environmental effects. So Ron, what is cumulative effects and what isn't cumulative effects? Okay, to put it simply, cumulative effects are the additive of all the different activities you might have on a given land base that will cause a negative effect on the environment there. Right, and so is this something new or has this been around for a long time? Not new, uh, we've known about it a long time, uh, but these days we now address it in a more thorough way because we, uh, we understand that there's an awful lot of overlap between activities on the land base. Definitely, like I mean, I can look back to my young days as a biologist, it was very much a siloed effect. You had parks, you had fish, you had wildlife. Whereas I guess what you're really saying is we're working across the board much better together now. Yeah, very much so. Trying to balance use as best we can, optimizing. Right, excellent. Well, now the big question I guess would be for a lot of hunter and uh, fishermen is, how does cumulative effects affect them and the limits that are set? Okay, a good example for that is uh, fishing limits. Um, if, for example, you have a, an industry upstream that's uh, polluting the stream or causing sedimentation and ruining spawning beds, um, uh, changing the temperature of the water because of too much vegetation removal, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, basically what you end up with is an effect on the stream that causes it to be less productive. Right. So basically then we have to uh, lower limits so the fish can make it. 
Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Ron. And I mean, really, I think what everybody should take away from this is understanding that the environment is a very dynamic system. There's things hitting it from all different sides. And in order to make proper management decisions, we have to move forward by using things like cumulative effects to really understand the impact plan. But now let's get back to some more hunting action at Bushnell's Trigger Effect. For more information on Bushnell's Trigger Effect, visit our website or Facebook. Now, back to the action. Boy, I tell you what, she is warm here in South Texas, ain't Oh, you? yeah, definitely. But, you know, Kent and I will admit, though, this has been a hunt we've been waiting for our whole life. Neither of us have ever hunted javelina, yeah. and here we are hunting javelina. Yeah, I mean, we're in the typical Southern Texas style hunting. We're in a box blind. We've got few shooting lanes, and uh, it's looking really good. I mean, we were in here earlier. And we saw quite a bit of sign, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We were here with uh, Arnold from uh, South uh, Texas uh, hog hunting. And we, we did a bit of a thing. We pulled the cards. We saw some javelina. Javelina tracks are pretty much everywhere. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm super excited. I, you know, like I said, javelina has been on my bucket list a long, long time. Yeah, so we're going to sit back, get the camera spun around, and hopefully these little stink pigs will show up soon. Did you bring the air conditioning? It's, it is. It's... Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, maybe, it's, it's on full bore. Maybe next time bring the air conditioning. Oh boy, I tell you, <laughs> I'm gonna fill my pockets with ice tomorrow. <laughs> More Bushnell's trigger effect after these important messages. This segment is brought to you by King's Camo. See the difference. Now, back to Bushnell's trigger effect. Well, the temperature's dropped a bit. Yeah, it's nice, a little bit of a breeze. Um, looked like we were gonna get rain, but it's kind of pushed, I'm gonna say to the north of us, but I really don't Yeah, know. no, that is kind of the north. <laughs> so, it's 7.30, yeah. and the trail camera picture showed, I think the hawks were coming out right around 8 o'clock. 8, 8.30. So, we're going to oh. cross our fingers. So far, all we've seen is cows. Yeah, we've got a couple cows standing here. We had one cow walk under our blind, <laughs> and we heard a clunk, and her ladder for the blind isn't attached. So, it, it could be interesting getting We might get stranded here for the night. But, uh, now that cool breeze is sure welcome. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's not so much the temperature is bad, but the humidity is really, really yeah. heavy here. So. I thought it was going to be drier heat down here in yeah. Texas in the summertime, but uh, no, they got worse humidity than Manitoba. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, well, let's get back to Havelina. Huh? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so uh, we just had a javelina showing up at the feeder. We're gonna get in on it and see if we can uh, get a shot at it. Looks like a good one. Okay, so what I did is I uh, texted the uh, outfitter, Arnold, and uh, you know, told him the scenario. He's on his way here. So I think what we're gonna do while we have a little bit of light um, is you know, head over there, have a look, see if we can see a sign of blood, uh, maybe track it. You know, who knows? You know, sometimes in these things, you know, you shoot, and even as an experienced hunter, you start to second guess yourself. I felt incredibly solid on the shot. 
but after reviewing it, I start to question myself. Kent thought he heard a squeal, and so um, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and you know see the big line there, or maybe I'm right. So we won't know until we go check. So we're gonna start packing up and wait for Arnold and head over there, and hopefully I get my very first javelina. Upon reviewing the footage, we could clearly see it was a clean miss through the tall hair on the back of the neck of the javelina. However, we still spent the better half of an hour looking for any sign just to make sure. As suspected, there was no hair or blood. I guess I still have not checked off javelina on my bucket list. Well, Kent, that was an absolutely incredible time down here in South Texas. I mean, you know, hunting, fishing, it doesn't get any better than that. However, I would really like to extend another huge thank you, even though we thanked him in last week's episode, yeah. to Arnold and Nathan. Uh, you know, it was an absolutely incredible hunt. You can go to our website and look up, you know, South uh, Texas Elite Hog Hunting if you want to have an amazing javelina hunt or even a hog hunt at that extent. Yeah, you bet. And also, Arnold hooked us up with John Barrera. He's got his own charter company. It's called Eat, Fish, Sleep, Repeat Charters out of South Texas here. One of the best boat captains we've ever been with. We were on fish all day long, spotted trout. You got a big Jack Cravel. This was a fantastic trip. We loved mixing it up for you folks. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We want to thank our sponsors, you the viewers, and make sure you join us next week for more Bushnell's Trigger Effect. Canadian Wild Turkey Federation is a proud conservation partner of Bushnell's Trigger Effect. Taxidermy services for Bushnell's Trigger Effect. When Ken and I discovered that we're going to be sitting in a box blind in South Texas, out in the wide open sun, we decided the best way to hunt was in t-shirts, comfy shorts, and sandals. A bit of a treat for a Canadian, that's for sure. The reality is I'm such a good fisherman that I'm just selective. I'm waiting for the third waiting incher. Waiting for the yeah. giant. Yeah, that, that's what you told me, so. You're good at something, Dean, but I don't know if it's fishing. <laughs> this has been a Thunder Boys production.